Johnny Dean, Dennis Smith here, uh, coast to coast, nationwide on the Boomer's Brain Trust show. Thanks for uh, joining us. By the way, you can uh, uh, find us online, boomersbraintrust.com. You can find our, our, our guest segments, our first fives, all that stuff. If you missed any part of that program, you can find a podcast, subscribe to it right there. Interviews and guest segments from the past several days and or weeks. Here, uh, see and hear them today, boomersbraintrust.com. All right, so uh, uh, we've got, uh, you, you know, we boomers, we've been, around, we've been around a long time. Yes, we have. If there's one thing that life experience has taught us is that a, a, a real key to survival is resilience. So the question is, what is resilience? The ability, I think, to bounce back from whatever the slings and arrows and darts that life throws at us, among other things. Uh, here to talk about this and, by the way, talk about how we can build up brain tissue as we get older so as to avoid memory loss. We've got a couple of topics here. He's one of our favorite experts in this field, Dr. Roger Landry, MD. Dr. Landry, get this, he's a highly decorated full colonel, okay? Former chief flight surgeon at the Air Force Surgeon General's Office in Washington and preventive medicine physician. He's uh, conducted extensive practical research on the influence of lifestyle on the aging process and compiled his findings in his first book entitled uh, live Long, Die Short, A Guide to Authentic Health and Successful Aging. Uh, it's all about getting rid of the stereotypes of aging and, and really redefining the possibilities of older adulthood, which speaks right to our brain trust, our, our boomers audience. Hey, Dr. Landry, welcome back to the show. Hey, my pleasure to be back. Thank you. Sure. So now we're going to get to the process of, of uh, rebuilding, uh, building brain tissue here in just a moment. But I want to talk first about this whole idea of resilience among boomers. I would think that age and experience, which naturally I think means being knocked down time and time again and then getting up, would make someone in the older generation stronger. Or do I have it backwards? Are younger people more resilient, kind of like a fighter who's only in round one? Well, it's a combination. I think you really described it well when you started off. I think uh, I like to think of uh, uh, going through life. If you have a pulse, you have wrists, you know. And so I like to think of them as buzzards. Oh, they're circling overhead. And when you're young, those buzzards are very high. You get older, they're getting lower. They're taking nips out of you, grabbing at something out of a Hitchcock movie, you know. <laughs> but uh, it, it, we know that if you have a pulse. Life's going to throw you curveballs, slings and arrows. The critical thing is that when that happens, that you be in the best place that you can be, so that you're strong physically, you're strong mentally, you're strong socially, you're engaged with others, and you have a purpose in life. And when all that is there, boy, you know, you feel like impenetrable. You, know, you can still get the hit, but you'll be able to bounce back just as you just well, I know, Dr. Landry, it's, it's one thing to say that we'll be resilient, uh, that we'll be able to bounce back from setbacks, and, and maybe we will. But um, problems, for the most part, they seem so much bigger when we're actually in the middle of them, as opposed to, you know, say, when we look back at them later on. How does someone come to believe that they're actually strong enough to survive something that they're going through? Well, first of all, you, you, however old you are, you've gotten this far, you've taken a bunch of them, you know, and... You've had a lot of crises that you thought were going to be like not necessarily the end of you, but the end of life. You knew it, and you bounced back. You made it. So you had, what Tony had said earlier that maybe after we get older, we survive. So see, you know, then you start to think, you know, I can handle this. In fact, in the centenary study in New England, only 100 year olds were in this this study, and the single most important thing they that they know life's going to throw them a curveball. I mean, they're over 100. And yet, they don't worry. They just say, I'm going to be able to do it just as I have everything. But if you have a good social support system with you, you know, I think that is, uh, makes you very, very popular. Well, okay, now, Dr. Roger Landry is here with us. Let's, let's switch gears for just a moment. Uh, now, this, this month is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, many people of the boomer generation, I think, are, are, are dealing with things like memory loss, either with themselves or with somebody close to them. You've talked about building brain tissue. How does that work? You know, when I was in medical school, they told us you couldn't do this. After you were an adult, you didn't grow new brain tissue. But we know now it's not true. So when we challenge our brain by learning new things, and we're physically active because the brain needs a lot of blood to grow new brain tissue, that we do indeed make new pathways. Those pathways make us less likely to experience the memory loss that we consider to be parcel of aging. You know, I hate that term, senior moment. 
because everybody has those moments. It's just that when you get older, you get more significance on them, you know, and you worry. So if you if you're physically active, you're mentally active, learning new. You know, we even start in a nun study that these nuns, some of them, after a long life of being physically and mentally active, they uh, when they died, we looked at their brains and they were Alzheimer's brains. They had no symptoms. Wow. Because of lifestyle. Interesting. Now, I know you have uh, a book out. Your book is Live Long, Die Short. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and some of the philosophies behind it? Well, sure, Donna. The, 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 the title itself is what we call in public health, a compression of morbidity. That wouldn't have been a title, would it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's really, morbidity is when we're sick and when we're impaired. So we want to test the time that we are prepared. So live long life, the very best we can be, and then press the time for actually, you know, almost drop off a cliff. So in this, I look at the research uh, on on how to do that kind of lifestyle. I give people actually a test so they can check their lifestyle out. Second part of the book is a bunch of 10 tips, and then the third part is about what we need to do as a society to, to make it easier for people to age. Dr. Roger Landry, hey, thanks very much for being with us. We do appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to have to check that out. And by the way, next time we have you on, I want to talk about this whole sandwich generation idea where we boomers wind up taking care of both parents and children. I know you've had, you've had some experience in that as well, right? You bet. I'd be happy to, John. Thanks. Dr. Roger Landry, once again, live uh, long, die short. Uh, live long, die short. Well, I, we talked about this philosophy last time. Yes, we did. And I know we had some audio trouble with his with his phone, so I apologize for that. But but uh, the whole idea, of course, is once again, you make the most out of what you have. And frankly, I think I think boomers have had that sort of philosophy for the many many years. Uh, you know that. What was it? Live for the moment, I think. Right, what, right. Whatever that was, yep. philosophy that people had back in the 1960s. Yep. I mean, it sort of permeates the Seize boomer the generation, Carpe does it not? Diem. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I you know, I, I hope you're right. I hope we do have that that tendency because you know you always think, uh, you know, with boomers, we are kind of more focused on me, 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 as opposed to you know yeah. generations before us who definitely were resilient. Well, you want to talk about resilience? That's the thing. We get accused of that, but at the same time, and it, it, if we'd had time, we, we didn't, and again, I apologize for the audio on the phone. It was sort of in and out. But uh, the, the what we like to talk about next time is the fact that we aren't as self-centered as you might think because, once again, this generation taking care of the older generation exactly. as they have to do and taking care of the younger generation as they yep. have to do. So I love it when Dr. Landry joins us. Yeah, I do, good, too. Good, good information. Yeah, he's got a great guy. Okay, so uh, we're out of time. If you need the Brain Trust, you go to Boomer's BrainTrust.com, BoomersBrainTrust.com. For Dinah Smith and everyone else, I'm Johnny Dean. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.